We need someone to take this pirate down. He's been terrorizing our waters for too long. You have to call him. Call who? You know who I'm talking about. Call Basker. It's about time we just get the best and get it over with. But that's gonna cost us a lot of money, sir. I don't care. We're losing money on the seas, okay? Get me the best right now. They finally decided to pay up, huh? This is gonna be easy. I never had such an easy mark in my life. I mean, look at these pirates. They're clearly untrained. They can barely even hit me. Huh. 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 Why is there, are this, a, is that a crocodile? Oh my God, he's getting angry. Up, oh, but too slow for a detective like me. Huh. So you're the pirate that everyone's been talking about. Hiding behind your lackeys, I see. Wait, how did I get off the ship? Oh God, oh God. Psych! I'm sorry, but I must arrest you, for it is my job, my mission, my rent. Honestly, this is the only reason why I'm doing this. I, I'm really behind on bills, and at this point, I gotta take whatever comes in. Toodles! What is going on guys it is your boy cash and we are here today with the beautiful lovely furry basker the underworld detective i hope you guys like the little skit in the beginning oh, i had so many ideas there's so many detectives and things of that nature but i thought you know wait britain is like a really cool dungeon and i could just make it seem like he's on a case let me know in the comment section below if you actually enjoyed that little silly thing I, I always have fun having little fun with the intros and things of that nature. But as you can also see, he was able to solo the dungeon, of course, with my manual, because if you leave him on auto, he'll go crazy. But it's still pretty impressive that just by spamming S1 over and over and over again, that you can do a four star admin. Now, Britain is one of the easier ones, don't get me wrong. But as you could see through the little bits that I showed, he's dodging a lot. He's mitigating some damage. He's healing back up almost kind of near to full with three enemies in scope. That is a 60% HP heal. So let's go straight into that. But we have to first go through the most important thing, rags to riches, four star to five star. So we can see here, he starts off, you know, he was, you know, the bills weren't being paid. You know, he just started off. He was just a young, young furry detective. And then, you know, he started getting some notoriety. Started pimping out with the purple. The, you see the purple inside? And then the gray outer? Look at this man. This is what happens when you start accomplishing yourself and just becoming a well-known source of just detective work. You know, this at this point, he is like, he's pretty much a, what is like Dick Tracy or something like that? And then he becomes the levels of Batman. And I say Batman's better just because, you know, he's still last the test of time. You don't see Dick Tracy anymore, but you're gonna hear about the boy Basker. Now you can see he has way more decorations. He's really smooth. He actually looks really cool in his picture to the left. I really like how like you could really see the colors of his outfit in the in the portrait to the left. He, you know, it's like, it's like black, but like the gray thing. Ugh, he actually really cool design. Without further ado, let's get into the skills. What you guys are probably more interested in, and it's like, how do I use this character? And a lot of people I know are, are waiting for that. They they've been asking like, where's the Basker guy, mother? Putting guns in my head. I had to hire Basker to get those people off my back. So without further ado, let's see the leader skill, which is the thing that is absolutely helping him dodge. Is the Backstreet Detective is increasing Dark Allies evasion by 25 percent. 25% on top of his other passive, which is, spoiler alert, 50%. So it's about 75% chance to dodge. Next up is his first passive, which is Wild Instinct, which is the caster gains Wild Instinct at the start of the wave or upon receiving an abnormal status effect. So if they try to stun you, if they try to pretty much do anything that involves an abnormal status, he will get Wild Instinct automatically. Don't have to worry about it. So that's pretty good. When the caster has Wild Instinct, all attacks ignore defense and evasion is increased by 50%. So that's around 75%. I know sometimes the math is, what is it, multiplicative, not additive. I, I forgot how it is. So I don't know exactly, it, I think it's 75%, but it could be like that weird number when you add values and confuse the hell out of me. But I think most percentages just add on top of each other, if I'm being honest. I could be wrong, but as you can see, when I showed the Britain footage, he dodges a lot. He definitely would dodge way more than half of the time 
which is very, very crucial. Next up is the 60 passive, which is the impromptu inspection. At the start of the turn, removes one abnormal status, or when I was doing Sid runs, he actually would cleanse the mental, the breaker or whatever they call it in Sid's dungeon, the mental seal, and he would actually cleanse it on his turn, which is really, really good. Has an 80% chance to remove protection from all enemies when his turn starts, I should reiterate that. And there is the best thing right there, is restoring the caster's HP by 20% per enemy hit. His S2 and S3 are single targets, and his S1 is a cone. That's why I wanted to make sure that he was hitting in a cone to make sure that I was healing 60% HP. That I know for a fact, because he was... And when I go to the rune section, you're going to see exactly how little investment I had to make that, and he was still able to clear it by himself, which is pretty impressive, I'd have to say. Next up is his first passive skill, which is going to be Game is Afoot. This is, as I said, hits in a cone, has a chance to remove one buff, and it also inflicts additional fixed damage equal to 5% of the max HP to those enemies hit. This is the similar thing to Ta This is a similar thing to Tarkus, which I really really like it that it actually does like a max HP damage, which is really good. It allows him to have consistent damage especially on targets with a lot of HP, which is where you're going to start to think, oh, he must be really good for PvE. As we can see here, we can level this up a little bit. Nothing really happens, especially when you click off of it like that. Nothing happens except that the chances get better, 60% chance to remove a buff, and also more importantly that the max HP to enemies goes up from 5% all the way up to 20% when you hit them. Another thing that we have to also mention is that this character is from the guild rewards, so it has to be mentioned that you will very likely have this character 666 much quicker than a banner character. So it is really important to note what you're going to be maxing out first, what is more important. I think that this skill right here is, but let me just go through the rest of them before I make that decision and someone crucifies me in the comment section. The S2 is going to be Manhunt. Inflicts penetration damage to one target, 70% chance to remove all buffs, 100% chance to gain Wild Instinct. Now as you guys can see here, Wild Instinct does not have a turn. He only loses it on his S3, spoiler alert. So you pretty much can keep it and keep those benefits of having the ignored defense on all your attacks and the loveliness of the evasion as long as you're S1ing, S2ing. As soon as you S3, you have to either hope <laughs> that you get an abnormal status, they attempt to abnormal status you, or you have to S2. So that is why I didn't want them to do that. But your S2 is on a relatively low cooldown. As you can see here, it also goes all the way up to level six. And then when it hits level six, all rebuffs will be removed by 100% chance. And it is a single target S2 nuke. As you can see here, 320%, that's usually what a S2 single target nuke is. So it's really, really strong. It's probably what you wanna level up second because you wanna be able to use this, especially when you already have Wild Instinct. This will be a nice chunk of damage it will be penetration, so it will go through shields, and on top of that, it will remove any buffs that they have, and it's on a low cooldown, so you'll be able to remove the buffs if you haven't been removing the buffs already with the S1 back and forth and back and forth. So let's go to the last one, which is the S3, which is still really good. <laughs> Everything he has is pretty good. I think I said that when he was first revealed. So under arrest, sorry. Your under arrest is inflicts penetration damage to a single target at 300. That's why I always say, like, because most of the time, 300% is an S3 nuke, and then when you max out an S2, it's 320, so if an S3 is always decent at level 1, then you can get a level 2 plus the benefits of it and still be in a good spot. That's my theory behind that anyway. So also, it 100% chance to increase all of the target skill cooldowns by one turn. What this effectively means is that if he can go first, we'll look at his base stats a little bit later to see how fast he is. He can go first, S3 a target and then they can't use their S2 or S3. Really, really useful, uh, you know, if you can get around. That's why his, I mean, we. I, I kind of brazed over it, right? This whole thing of removing protection is that he could pretty much remove all the protection for, that Electra's currently putting out and then target a person that you don't want to alt you and then you'll be in a really good spot. That's kind of one of the best ways to use it. Obviously, Ian is the other one that gives out protection and every single tank in the game has the hero talent to put out protection. So it's still pretty good. Target a character that you don't want using their skills. You don't want them ulting you. This is very PVP focused because I'm pretty sure there are no PVE bosses that care about this whatsoever. They will ult back and forth and back and forth. So they don't have skill cooldowns or anything like, anything like that. Also, if the cast has wild instinct, it will consume it, as we've said, to inflict additional damage. Now, this is, as you saw at the end when I killed Britain, this is when you want to finish off a character, in my opinion. Or you want to at least make sure that your S2 is up 
so you can put your wild instinct right back on let's see what happens as we level it up as you can see the in increased damage goes up when you consume the wild instinct and then the nuke damage also goes up so again this is mostly to kill off a target in my opinion someone that's really pesky or if you're trying to make a character not use their skills but remember as soon as you use that as soon as you use that it is gone you lose your ignore defense you lose your evasion and if you're not using him as a leader skill then you have no evasion if you're using him as a leader he has you know 25 percent obviously more dark allies in this crew the better so that's all up to you but he's a pretty good leader because he can stay alive he can keep himself alive for a pretty long time you can't strip wild instinct because it is a passive so as long as he is not stunned he will keep having a 50 percent chance to dodge this is very similar to like aiming with just innate ways of not taking damage but he's not the greatest thing in the world because when i did see when he was not dodging he doesn't have anything that actually mitigates the damage so you do have to keep that in mind he can heal himself though which i do like so if there's a decent amount of enemies alive he will be able to sustain himself and keep himself in the fight as long as he's hitting at least you know two to three enemies if he's hitting one it's just a 20 percent heal which is still pretty good there's no life steal in this game so he's like one of the best ones as far as like i'm just gonna keep myself alive by just hitting a bunch of enemies that's why I really focus and really think that the S1 is the first thing that you want to level up. Make sure it's doing good damage. Make sure that it has a decent chance to remove buffs. Make sure that the max HP fixed damage is at its highest potential. And then I would go for the S2. Actually, no, scratch that. I think that this one's okay, but like it's already starting off at 70%. It's on a low cooldown, so yeah, you'd be able to nuke it, but I actually think maybe the S3 second might be a little bit better. Just for the nuke possibility, because you're sustaining damage this whole time. This move is cool. It's on a little cooldown. But if you level this up, then you just use your S2 to put the Wild Instinct back on. I think that that might be better. Again, you'll eventually have this guy 666. Even though I never finished my Ian, don't look at me. Don't judge me. I see you with those judging eyes. I can feel it through the computer screen. But outside of that, I do think that maybe you want to do the S3 next. So you actually do have that nuke possibility. And when you do, because you will start off with Wild Instinct, you might even just straight out kill the target. <laughs> if we're being honest here, you might kill this first target that you're hitting. He's an attacker. He's not a hybrid, not a support, he's not a tank. So he will be doing decent damage. He has nothing to boost his damage outside of the ignore defense. But since we're here, let's just check out his moves here. Nice little slassy, which is, that's a cone attack. See, you need to learn from your boy, Adrian. That cone attacks, you need to be lashing out. And that's the S2, one single swipe, pretty, Pretty whack, if we're being honest here. And S3 animation, which is also pretty whack. Like, that looks too comical? I don't know. I'm a coming. <laughs> Just looks too, it doesn't look too aggressive. I actually would have liked if he, like, actually placed him under arrest and put him in a cop car or something like that. So, comparison to Adrian, which I, it's not fair to compare most people to Adrian. He's pretty whack uh, as far as his animation. But here's the boy. We're gonna, but here's the boy Basker. We're gonna be looking at his actual base stats here and then we'll go into the runes. But as you can see, just a quick little quick thing. Look at his attack. Look at these stats. He has more HP, you'll see why. I had to put him on life runes. I, had to, I, I, I hate going broken set, even though it's not that bad of a thing to do, but it drives me nuts. Anyway, his base stats are gonna be the same as all SSR attackers at level 60. I know some of you guys are tired of hearing this, but the base stats of a SSR of a certain role are exactly the same outside of the attack speed. The attack, HP, and defense are the same, and I've done enough attackers by this point that you already should know that on the left side of the screen it is there, so let's just quickly wrap this up and just go with that attack speed. So he is actually sitting at a beautiful 579 base speed. Now that is pretty good. Obviously you want it to be 599, like, ruby and some other characters but 579 is pretty good that means that if you do put him on agility and have some attack speed substats you could go first you have a decent shot at going so so decent shot at go that is like that doesn't even sound right you have a decent shot of getting it so the speed's pretty good i don't want to spend too much time i usually spend a little bit too much time on the base stats so let's go straight into the runes and as you can see these are his runes. nothing is upgraded outside of this one assault rune over here to the right and everything else was not. So you have to think about how cool it is that I was able to do an actual 
Four star advent, like I said, I know Britain's like actually the easiest one to do, but it's still pretty impressive. This is not what I would necessarily suggest, but I would be suggesting assault. Now, one thing that I've noticed about characters that ignore defense is that not that their attack has to be super high, but you definitely want to crit. You can skimp out on attack if you're going for crit to make sure that they ignore defense because it's not like ignoring defense as a percentage. You're ignoring the entire defense, so that is like almost raw damage. So it's going to be slightly higher damage than what you're used to seeing, and if you get it to crit, it's going to do... Well, it's gonna do a lot of damage, <laughs> so don't I'm, don't super gimp out like these. This like I have no attack like this is whatever. You probably don't want that. You definitely want some crit chance. And if you guys don't know, crit chance comes on the six, one, and the two slot. So try to get it in there, possibly for the one or the two. But you don't want to super gimp it because then your HP will be too low and you'll get one shot. Or you can run the risk. You can. You can run that risk and maybe get hit more evasion. Evasion, I think, is on the three, four, five is where evasion lies. So if you get more evasion, maybe you can run a little bit risky. Sets wise, you probably want to go agility, which we definitely spoke about. Agility is going to be really, really good. Just if you want him to go first, more focus on S3, nuking a target, or just for the fact that you want to reset a target. Like if you don't want to die to <laughs> Verdandi on turn one, you make a very fast Basker. He'll actually outspeed the Verdandi. S3 her so she cannot S3 on her first turn things of that nature you can do the same thing to a reviver if you have enough damage to kill another target then you have Basker S3 the reviver so they can't revive there's a lot of ways to do that and the only way you're going to be able to do that in arena anyway is going to be with agility counter over multi multi is really good but counter to me is a lot better because you'll take way more hits especially if you guys don't know that there is a aggro there is a aggro inside of the dungeons that when you do too much damage to the character that does the most damage, the enemies will target them. Uh, we figured this out a while ago, so if you ever wanted to know why your highest DPS keeps getting focused, that's probably why. So if Basker is the highest DPS amongst your group and he's going to be focused and he's dodging, you want him to hit back. I don't know if it works in arena, I never tested that myself, but in arena as well, if he's the leader, you don't want him to die and every time they attempt to kind of hit him he's gonna swing back so that's pretty a cool way in my opinion that's why counter is really really cool and a good option for you never forget about rage he is an attacker you definitely want to make sure he has some damage on him so make sure you get rage if you don't have the other sets sub stats are always more important than anything make sure your stats are good ssr attacker you're looking for at least 7k attack if not more and then every other stat is more to your liking if you want them to have more counter if you want more multi-strike you can do that too you want to want more speed all of that's up to you but that's just how i would be building him i'm going to be building him mostly on counter attack crit chance and if i can find some cheeky evasion i'll put that in there too last but not least we are going to be going with the beautiful lovely hero talent so the hero talents are as you guys know a little way to you know customize your guy but we all gonna follow the same advice, so it's not really customization. Anyway, Weapons Mastery is gonna be your 50. I mean, none of this other stuff is cute. Yay! Yeah, yeah, Weapon Master. Next up, 52. As you can see here, these are probably the best. Are you using him in Arena? Are you using him in PvE? Up to you, 54. Now, this one, even though it's 50% chance, you will be, if you're going counter multi-strike, I would say Burning Weapon is not that bad of an option. But if you were, you know, you think you're gonna get hit, you don't wanna die when you get hit, go for some fortified armor. I'll probably be going with burning weapon because like I said, burns do synergize with a lot of characters. And on top of that, my basket will be countering a lot. So his S1 will be going off a lot. 56, same thing here. But just to, I don't care about him losing damage or taking less damage from here, but I can go this. I love to put these on characters that have damage mitigation or straight up don't take damage at all from evasion. So you can get a nice little attack crease, boost your overall damage while you're not taking damage at all. So for me, I'm going with Grudge. 58, we're gonna go with Plant Attack. That's usually what we like to go through. But if there is a shield, he, can, he has a chance to strip it anyway. So I guess I was still, I'm still going with plan attack. I want those, I want to crit. I want those ignore defense attacks to crit. And last but not least, 60 is duh. All right, so here we go. Now I get to sit here and explain things. So we have the wild instinct here. As you can see, that's the passive. That's exactly what it looks like. I'm gonna defend so you guys can see. I love his dodge animation. It looks pretty cool. So we have the S1. 
goes up and slices you as you can see that's the heel pretty pretty self-explanatory nothing too crazy here dodge dodge and this is what i was saying is that there's three enemies here and then most of the time in pve there's multiple enemies they're usually faster than you just taking like kali for example you're going to take a lot of hits so like if you were to dodge all three of those hits that they just tried on me, counter, counter, you're going to heal all that HP back for any damage that you actually did take that you didn't evade. And, you know, you're going to do some damage. So that's kind of why I liked it. Let's check out the S2. Not flashy. Nothing that he does is flashy, unfortunately. And then last but not least, you know, we like the S3 Alton. It's his destiny in life to be s 3 unfortunately. Sorry, guy. And there it is, the lovely little animation. Just just not too flashy, not, eh, it's whatever. <laughs> and that's gonna be it for me. I do apologize how long it took for me to get this video up. And it's dropping a little bit later in the night. I again apologize, I like to get them out in the morning time, but I have work <laughs> and I have to go to work. I'll be getting off of work later in the night. Then I'll have to edit this down, then pop it out to you guys. I'm already at 40 minutes. <laughs> And this video definitely won't be 40 minutes. I'm assuming, I'm guesstimating it's gonna be like 20 minutes. I just have to do a lot of editing because of all the recordings that I was doing. But hopefully you guys enjoyed. And another little surprise, just so you guys know that there's gonna be some new content coming up on the channel and it's actually not gonna be any gacha games. If you guys can guess, I wonder if you guys can guess, it'd be funny if you could. But that's gonna be coming up soon. I'm looking forward to showing you guys a little something different, a little something spicy. It's been a while since we had something brand new on the channel. It's not gonna stop Knights Chronicles or Epic Seven or anything like that. It's just something that I kinda wanna add on as a third game, because I don't know where Alun's going right now. <laughs> but anyway, something more important than all that stuff I just discussed with you is that every day at the Casino is your lucky day, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.